Hello everyone, Dan 14 Prime here. Today bringing you a video review of the Transformers Masterpiece Takaratami Destron Laser Wave MP29, aka Shock Wave as we know them in the in the West. Typical masterpiece packaging, black box, got some pics in bot and alt mode there on the front. Top of the box here has them in the saluting pose from the G1 cartoon. Then on the back here it's got the bunch of pics of different gimmicks and modes he can do. He's called the Destron Military Operations Commander up there in the left hand side. Here they're just showing you his LED lighting features in his gun mode and in his hand in bot mode. This set of pics here is just really some of his accessories. He's got the saluting hand, a little gun of himself, and also a regular hand so he can be two-fisted. And in this set of pics they're just showing you his Gun stand, which doubles as a backpack accessory in bot mode. Okay, so that's a little bit of flavor for what we're going to find in the box. Let's go ahead and pop them open. Check them out. So here is Laser Wave out of the box. He does come in gun mode. I do have the stand there, which is a separate accessory. Very easily folds out. I've kind of decked him out a little bit already. I've got the hose on him here, which is a nice sort of springy metal hose uh, that should be really durable and last a long time. They were obviously thinking about those old G1 hoses when they made that thing. Uh, he does have some stickers you can apply. You can see one there on the side of his arm in gun mode. I'm using the kind of old school cartoonish Decepticon looking sticker. You've got some options there I'll show you. And you do need to put some batteries in them. That arm piece right there is a battery cover. Uh, for the LEDs in his left fist, kind of the barrel hand, and then right here on his on his back, actually, there's a battery cover for two AAAs for his gun mode light up feature. And these batteries in here are those LR44s. Buy them off Amazon; they're about a fraction of the price of what you'll find if you go to your local hardware store. Spin around here to the other side. It's not very different, you know, good symmetry. You got the Decepticon logo there as well. Everything pretty much the same, except the hose is, of course, only on one side of the figure. Uh, but really nice looking gun. Definitely recognizable as Shockwave from the cartoon or from the G1 toy. So great homage to, to what we all know. And the color, you know, I think interesting. Uh, the color, it's a tough one. It's definitely a lighter kind of violet shade of purple. You know, we've seen them really dark, we've seen them maybe more blue, sort of shades in between. This is definitely kind of a light purple shade. And you can see that connection back to the G1 cartoon. Here's the straight on view. You're looking right down the barrel of the gun. We've got some clear plastic kind of fading into there, into the light feature. I will say I've got batteries in and everything and that light feature for me is not working unfortunately. So I've got a call in to and I'm export about maybe swapping this guy out because I cannot get that to activate. Sorry about that. And quickly, if you just flip him around to the back view here, probably the main thing I don't like about him is he's got the big gap right there for a couple of pieces that come together to make the legs. A cover or something there would have been nice because that is a very, very obvious hole. Here you can see the top of this guy. And unfortunately for a very visible spot of the gun, this is not his best angle. He's just got every single screw imaginable visible. I mean, there's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, twelve screws that you can see right there from this view. And I can see two, four, six, six pins. So just a lot of metal going on up here it really takes away from the flow of the figure from the top, unfortunately. A little difficult for you to see here, but I'm trying to show you the the sights, the aiming mechanism. It's just on this little flip-up piece of plastic here. It's part of transformation, but in gun mode you can't have it up or down. And there's some sights there. Just let me give you a little bit of a use the lens cover. A little bit of a darker background there, you can kind of see what that looks like. And I do want to show you here a little closer up on the hose. Again, it's a separate piece out of the box. It just plugs in here and there. Not a big deal. 
but again it is kind of this metal and you can you can kind of separate through it if you can see the white through there it's like a it's like a spring or something you can hear that so that's pretty cool no worries about that wearing out over time and this has a good form to it right good sturdiness and a good shape and I mentioned some sticker options you can see there on his arm I've got kind of the cartoon got a rougher looking Decepticon symbol you do get some options so you've got these cleaner ones here you get three big ones kind of one for each top of the form and then the chest if you like and then two for the side smaller ones for the side of the arm there so that's what those five are for you can see I used those four for the arms didn't put the one on the chest though but you can use either of those stickers kind of unfortunate that he has stickers I don't know why they can't just paint it on considering it's a masterpiece figure and the price of the figure but the stickers look good for now I'm just concerned about them wearing over time especially in some areas where on the arms you're frequently touching for for transformation and posing etc and while we're in the little baggie when I go ahead and show you his Transformers masterpiece little collector card that comes with the figure you can see some cool artwork definitely a darker purple on the card here and then when you flip it around here you get some pics of the toys, his stats, laser falcon mode, robot mode. Here's the instruction sheet that he comes with. See a set of pics here for laser falcon mode. You've got Destron laser wave mode, his bop mode. No backpack, you'll notice in those pics there. Over here on this side, they show his laser falcon cannon. That's basically the little version of him. You can see a pic in the G1 cartoon. He was in an episode holding a version of himself, so they include one of those. I mentioned on the box here, he's got a barrel in hand. So he has, he can have the fist, he can have the barrel. And they also include translucent and solid purple plastic. So you have some options to kind of be tune mode or toy mode. Then here in the corner, it has his backpack. And again, his backpack can be a stand while he's in gun mode which is pretty handy. Otherwise you couldn't really prop them up and display them like that if you wanted to. And then of course you can see how that flips around and can sort of parts form to go onto his back, give him a bulkier backpack if you want to do that. So here are the accessories I've been alluding to. Again, you get the backpack over here. It's very simply just opens up and flips over to become the stand as I was showing you before. You get some hands, left hand, kind of just a normal hand. You got some wrist articulation and some finger articulation. You have a right purple saluting hand if you want to go for that look. Then you have all the translucent equivalents for kind of toy mode. Same set there. And then you have the mini me. Here I'll give you a little closer look at this. It's pretty sharp looking miniature shockwave. Pretty nicely done. Got a little rope here for the, the cord, the hose. You can see it's got all the same detailing. Actually it might look better from the top, no screw holes. That looks pretty good. And again, this is just a gun, there's his chest. This is basically a gun that he can hold in bot mode. So we'll check that out on him as well. So this guy has a pretty simple transformation going to bot mode and back, obviously. But first, just start by separating the top couple panels there off the top of the gun and then just separate his arms. They just peg together there, so bring them down on his ratchet joints like that. In terms of these, these kind of fold up. There we go. So those will come up and sit higher up over the gun, like so. And this whole thing's just on a big lever. So go ahead and bring that down. 
fold it up. So fold that down and around and before you peg it in, go ahead and take the sight mechanism, fold that up, then fold it up again. And that has a peg on his butt and bring this down. This has pegs in his back. So right there, quite a bit of making the whole top of the figure come into play happens very quickly. Really nice kind of ratchets in the arms there. So just bring those down. And you can see where I put the other big stickers, kind of Popeye style, right on the top of the forms. You pop the head up, it just sits down in here on this panel that, that lifts up. So you just pop his head up as well. And you might notice from time to time, there you go. There's a light piping feature right there. It's kind of his own little sunroof that grabs light and spits it out the front of the eye there. So you can definitely notice that. So that's kind of a neat feature. So we're practically there. Here, we want to um, undo some latches here. Mine might have been undone already, but there's some pegs there. You want to make sure those are down so you can move these pieces out. They just flip like so, and then give them a twist so the hollow end faces you. Come to the handle of the gun and separate it. And just let it kind of flop open. There are some hip pieces here, which you can put up just for kind of, you know, safety. They tend to pop up either way, just as part of transformation. They get forced out, but it is a step. So now you have them like this. Go ahead and pull out this plastic piece and make part of the leg. That will just peg in right there. Same thing over here. Fold out the plastic piece and it pegs in. Mine's being stubborn, but there that is. Go ahead and bring the foot up. That's going to be the front of the foot. And then this just kind of folds down. So you're basically making his feet right now, his legs, backwards. Those will slide right in. So this piece, which was the kind of hollow piece I mentioned, will slide right into the inside of the leg and peg in. So that creates the leg. Same thing over here. Just slides right in, creates the lip. Then just give them a twist around. See how they're kind of backwards, just pivot them. Voila, so you've made the legs. Put the hip panels back down. Basically there, don't forget to close down his chest. He's just got like a garage door. All right, just kind of use your fingernail there. And get that all the way down. And there he is, and to get some waist articulation, you can give him a little pull up. And now you can actually get him to move a little bit. So that is really the transformation. Which is super simple, very natural. Seems to almost happen by itself. So here's Shockwave next to Apollyon, the third party masterpiece Megatron figure. Uh, if you don't know, that Megatron figure scales about the same as MP10, at least up to the head, of course. Forget the barrel piece. So that can give you a sense in terms of where Shockwave fits in compared to an MP10, compared to this masterpiece-ish Megatron here. He's coming up to about his kind of shoulder area. So they're using G1 tune scale. Um, Shockwave is kind of one of those tweener guys like an Ironhide where he's not, not one of the big leader classes, but he's not a small Carbot style either. So Takara's coming out with this next level of uh, of scale where we're hitting the Shockwaves, the Ironhides, and people like that. So great addition to the collection. So here's a closer up view of Shockwave. See again, nice and clean. It looks really good, I gotta say. And again, in terms of the color, I mean, considering he's a very unique mold, I'm sure he'll get several color releases. You know, they'll probably do a gray. They'll probably do a dark purple for a toy. But I'm sure they'll crank some colors out because he's a very popular figure. And I think there's a lot of different tastes out there in terms of what color people want their shockwave. So if you don't love this color, you know, you can be patient. I'm sure more will come. 
But in terms of the figure here, again, I think I showed you a little bit the light piping effect, which is cool. I've got these stickers here on his forms, and you can see it's on the inside there when he's in gun mode, where those other stickers are. Again, you can stretch them out a little bit so you get better waist articulation. That does create a little bit of a gap here. Um, if you crunch them forward, you can make that go away, but then he kind of looks like he's leaning forward. So it's a matter of preference there. If you want articulation, it's got to be out. If you'd rather have everything nice and tight, you can close that down as well. And here down to the hand accessories, again, I've got the purple pieces on. We saw all the different accessories we have there. Translucence, two hands, everything we can do there. And then just down into the legs. It's come together, you know, pretty nice. Let's say some of the paneling here, you know, it's not perfect in terms of how those pieces come together to be flush, but it's uh, it's pretty good. I will just say in terms of the head, I don't love the head. It's unlike this elevator kind of piece for transformation. I feel like whenever I touch the head, it just it wants to go down. I always feel like I'm pulling it up just to make sure I've got it all the way out. You know, I'll give you a quick profile view. Again, I don't yet have the bulky purple backpack on, just so you know. You can see it looks really good in bot mode. It's nice and clean. The good thing about Shockwave is you actually expect some backpack there, so it accommodates the bot mode pretty well. Here's the back of the figure. You can see how that gun barrel folds up. The hose here comes around the back of the arm. Pretty simple figure. You know, and I think it's that simplicity that makes it really, really cool, really nice looking, and people like it. I do too. I think it's really good. So if you do want the purple backpack on, just go ahead and grab this thing, kind of crack it open into kind of an L shape. Give this backpack a little tug off so it's like this and just slide it up and you want to thread the long purple piece through the backpack. There it goes. Just kind of thread that on through so you can close this piece up. There you go. Pull all the way through. So this comes out nice and flush actually. All the way through. That's how you get on the the bigger purple backpack. There's a side view of that if you prefer this look. I like both looks actually. I mean, I think they both look good either way. This is a nice way to have the figure kind of complete in terms of everything you need for gun mode and everything together in bot mode. A little bit of parts transformation, but not that big of a deal. That gives him the big boss backpack. Here with his, um, Hosed arm, they do want to show you have a couple options. This is kind of the standard preferred option, if you will. Hose coming around and attaching on the back of the arm. But if you like that more visible look, his arms are basically symmetrical. So you can just flip it around like that. And there you go. Now you got kind of more of a hose coming out the front, plugging in on top. As I showed you, he has a lot of extra hands. Um, they come off really easy, right? Just pop these things off. They just peg right on. So super easy. Take off both the hands. And then you can put on, for example, the translucence. And what I'm doing here is basically gearing them up to be more like toy mode. You know, color aside, but I think this is how we would know them for toy mode. Kind of the translucent hands, the hose on top, the big purple backpack. Now I have them like this with the translucence on. Let me show you the light up gimmick that I have that does work. And that's the blaster. So there's a button right here, kind of nice soft rubber button on the inside of the arm that you can push. And again, Battery covers right there on the outside. So you can do that. I didn't mention before because my my gun 
mode wasn't working, but there's a switch here in terms of getting different types of effects while he's in gun mode. But again, unfortunately, I can't show you that. I think you can see this pretty well. Really nice light up feature. No sounds, but I'm fine with that. I remember the sounds of the G1 toy were just freaking annoying. So this is a, I think the right balance. And I'm going for the salute pose here. I've got the translucent saluting hand on. You can't quite get it perfect. Um, you really need probably a double jointed elbow to get that up where it should be. If you can see, it's just, it's off. You can't get it to the top of the head, really. You can kind of just put it in front so you can sort of get the look from the right angle, but um, it's definitely lacking a little bit of flexibility to make that go exactly how you'd want it to go. And then finally here, I do have him holding his mini-me. I've got both hands on, both purple hands on, in the Vulcan cannon and hand there. Take a look at what that looks like. Very cool little accessory. So in terms of articulation, his head's gonna move around. It's on this transforming piece, which I, I don't love again. But you can get the head to turn and look up. You can down a little bit, but that's not very good. But definitely some movement there, which is good. The arms are all ratchety, so transformation joint there comes up to transformation joint. So you can get a lot with the arms around. You get the 90 degree elbow again, needs to be better for a, a salute. Wrist will pivot the hand, you got kind of just like a fixed, like this, fingers and thumb sort of thing that will close in. Again, you get some wrist movement there as well. For the waist, if you give them a little lift, that's how you release the waist articulation. So you can get some of that and actually can give you some, some rocking a little bit. So you can do some stuff there. What else? Legs come out and panels, panels will accommodate in the front. Got a knee that goes about like that, so not quite 90 degrees. This will go out to the side as well. Again, a lot of these move for transformation, so you get a good range. The pivot up there at the thigh, the foot moves like that. You do get some tilt. This one's kind of tight and struggling for some reason. Um, but this one I can show you better. For your ankle tilt. So I think that's about uh, everything, all the major stuff. So pretty good articulation. I'll, I'll show some poses at the end. I think you can do a lot with the guy. So there you have it, guys. Takara's Transform Masterpiece MP29. Destron Laser Wave, or as we know him, Shock Wave. Really nice figure, very happy with it. Sucks that my gun light up feature doesn't work, but I showed you everything else that the guy can do. Definitely recommend picking them up. They could be a great addition to your masterpiece collection. All right guys, I'll see you next time.